Hello to viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, we're going to talk about speed of light. So let's dive right into it. Now, this is one of those things that does not make sense, but once you look into it, it does make sense. Well, we classify light speed as constant. That's why E equal to mc squared. It's not there like, you know, light speed squared. It's c squared. That's the primary reason for that. Now, our understanding of physics have evolved over the well, centuries and we have learned some crucial facts, meaning there are some laws in this universe, meaning things that cannot be broken, that cannot be tampered with, meaning we have discovered it. And the more research we do into this, the more I will like, no, this is absolute. This is one of those things It's like, yeah, it's there you can't uh, you know ignore it light speed is one of such constant now on top of that like light speed itself is light speed it's also tied to other physical law for example if you do not know light speed how the heck you're gonna do equal to mc square and again it goes with everything else also for example electricity how quickly electricity travels from uh, you know one magnetic coil to another magnetic coil directly uh, you know dependent on light speed everything is tied to one way or the another tied to light speed meaning how uh, you know atoms react photons section everything is directly you know locked to this puppy so this is one of those things that we classify as fundamental constant of our variant of universe so this is one of the things that's why we call it c and it we assume that is not gonna change and the more research we do the more uh, you know r d we put into it the more we are like yeah it's not gonna change and uh, that's the primary uh, depictions of science fiction that's the first thing they break it's like you can travel faster than light so so you get that point like this is serious and significant enough and again it's one of those things that we know i mean like whole radar industry works on that and everything else also but you get that point like it is one of those things that's like solid absolute constant now to understand it's important for our world well the meter is defined by light now you're like wait a minute why well uh, before this sort of uh, upgrade of basically si base unit si base unit used to have things basically length was a rod that was uh, like you know a certain length like this is a rod and this rod is meter now again that was the absolute meter the problem it's a physical rod you have to basically create a clone of it which is super difficult to do and then you have to transfer it and more and more people realize that those things are really not reliable the last thing that was upgraded was kilogram uh, simply because kilogram they literally had one uh, basically platinum iridium cylinder and it was like awesome it did work but problem was it was starting to drift and that's the problem it's like it's not tied down to constant of the universe so it could go yolo on it like it could gain weight it can lose weight you have no way of measuring so because again that itself is the you know unit of measurement so how the heck you will know so the reality was people figured out very early on in si base unit is like if you want it to be reliable it has to be based on constant of the universe so light speed is one of those constant now definition of meter has been changed from that you know one meter uh, length of rod from uh, basically that to light speed in 1983 so basically right now you what does one meter mean one meter simply means if you take absolute vacuum you are sent one photon photon should travel from a to b now if it reaches b at a certain distance that a certain span of time that span being <sighs> Two nine nine seven nine two four eight uh, four five eight uh, you know divided by one second that's one meter now again that may sound uh, you know convoluted simply because okay you have a length of meter that is one you know this section of a second light travels that is one meter okay awesome but how the heck you know second again same thing we upgrade our si unit to go from like you know things that human made to something absolute tangible same thing happened here we are now relying on cesium clocks and again you may think like cesium clock is made by human which is absolutely true it's fine transition energy spectrum no that's not ours that's like you know fundamental principle of the world so basically if the frequency output is precisely matched uh, like you know hyper uh, hyper fine splitting uh, frequency exactly that frequency that has a lot of ticks as in like 10 uh, around 9 gigahertz of ticks it has more than enough resolution to do this puppy and you don't actually use clocks to measure this you use uh, basically infer Intro infrarometry ah, that's a weird name you get that point like basically our measurement unit basically whole of our si unit is based on this puppy including miles and all that jazz simply because again there is no such thing as miles there is no such thing as foot all of those things are a division of this meter there is nothing more than that the si unit is constant around the world and uh, the idea with this puppy is that if let's say tomorrow we have talked to any alien species we can just simply say hey uh, build a cesium system and cesium again assuming they have space travel they will know how to make atomic clock they were like okay cesium take this isotope have this sort of output count that and at this certain point okay that unit will be one second and then you, you take light speed and you take divide by this Tada! you have meter and second two of the primary system basically second and meter 
and this is the whole point of uh, SI units basically relying on constants of the universe so light speed is very important for our well measurements also so this is one of those things that you have to understand it's far more integrated in our day to day life than you would have thought now uh, how did we reach to this uh, ludicrously spe speedy conclusion well Ole Romer is the first one who kind of ex you know opened it up because you have to know that more than enough people have tried to measure the speed of light for example Galileo also tried more than enough people more than enough time it was not like you know lack of trying or like only few people tried more than enough people more than enough smart people have tried but most majority of them have failed now to give you a context of that Galileo he thought like uh, light is like only 20 to 30 times faster than sound that's very slow that's very slow light speed is much faster than that but Ole Romer uh, figured out something very unique in uh, basically 1676 yes this is old uh, he observed eclipse of Io basically you have Jupiter it has a uh, moon it has many moon one of them is Io and he was observing the uh, basically orbit basically when it went into the shadow of it okay everything works fine but he noticed something the orbiting period basically the duration of that orbit changed now first thought your watch may be broken that could happen so he started to note it down he did it thoroughly for years he spent years on this puppy now benefit of that is like once you started to collect all the data and plot it into a graph he noticed something unique that it's uh, the basically duration is proportional to where the heck earth is around the sun basically if sun is uh, basically earth is in l point it's different k point different it will uh, repeat it again at f point and g point that was the light bulb moment wait a minute it's not something that i'm tampering with it's something that's happening on a cosmological scale meaning again if you observe this and you observe it again in the next year if you tell this to the world and they observe it again in the, using their instruments their telescopes and the same time of the year basically f g and k position you are noticing that that is conclusive proof that light has a speed that was the biggest thing at that point in time before this people have tried and more or less they come up with the same point it's like yeah light is almost infinite fast but this is the first time light speed was like no light has a absolute limit it cannot just go yolo it has a limit this is the first time it was connected now uh, using this data point other people did try to figure out the basically light speed but problem is uh, they could not calculate light speed properly because that assumes you know the orbit of earth reliably enough meaning the measurement of orbit orbital uh, eclipse of the earth was not very well known at that point in time so sloppy results were like the most best result people got out of this probably was like a two lakhs kilometer like two hundred thousand kilometer per second that's off by a lot that's the primary reason for that it's like that time orbital uh, uh, of like orbital plane of earth was not measured properly enough now be mindful this is 1676 but it was quite good and it kind of proved it it's like at that point of course many people did not believe it but at this point in time this is not done by human it's like yeah have a telescope observe it and you will find this sort of again percentage may change a little bit but overall there will be a data pattern and you will notice it and you can repeat the experiment as many times as you want and that's the mark of a good science experiment and that's how it was proven like at this point in time anybody who was denying it was like you know denying it for their own reason it was like absolutely proven that light has a fixed speed and we are almost starting to you know come close to the final speed then we come to about i'm very sorry about this name i can't pronounce it uh basically this gentleman he in 1849 he did for, uh, something that was unimaginable basically he did what we call time of flight measurement meaning i'm gonna l launch light and I'm going to wait for it to come back and then I'm going to time it. Now you may be like, wait a minute, that sounds complicated, ludicrously complicated. Well, absolutely it is. And be mindful, it was done in 1849. So best clocks are basically pendulum clocks. So best, uh, everything is just mechanical at that point in time. Very sloppy equipments and all that jazz. Now, how did he achieve that? Well, he... Uh, Go, went back to history and he noticed something galileo was relying on an assistant basically galileo what he wanted to do is like have a lamp have a door twink, twink, twink. he wanted to do this and his assistant he trained them like you know if you see like if you see my lamp to be open do as quickly as that and they trained a lot for this both of them can do very quickly but problem was that created a human element and distance that he wanted to like you know try to do replicate his experiment was very short few kilometers so this gentleman 8.63 kilometers this is exactly where they wanted to do this experiment so he solved the fact like if light is fast you want a long distance the longer the distance the more chances you have that you can measure it properly okay he got that okay awesome then how do you solve that problem of like you know sinking with a person no remove that person put a mirror there uh, consequence not consequence as in like the benefit the le length become doubles which is desirable if you are using a sloppy equipment you want the length to be as long as possible so you do not have any errors there so he solved two of the problems now 
how do you turn on and off lights reliably be mindful this is before electronics properly so he had a lamp which be mindful a lamp that can shine this far out even with like you know small uh, reliable measurements you, you need a lot of power so a lot of optics was used to collimate the light at that point in time and uh, he simply had a wheel in front of that and now that wheel had tooth now tooth was built in a such a way that it had 50 percent on 50 percent off meaning if you take the circle the basically that band it was like you know if you are spinning it it's like if you put the light directly through it it will look like 50 percent dim simply because you know tooth is there tooth is not there tooth is there tooth is not there and the width of the tooth was directly proportional to the gap of the tooth so tooth is let's say one centimeter gap is also one centimeter perfectly balanced now rotating the rpm he started to find something very interesting using this system light is going on off on off on off now light is going out that's fixed that cannot be changed however the light that is coming is hitting uh, you know either the empty tooth or a blocked tooth now based on the rpm that started to change meaning the rpm started to go up he started to slowly start to block it the light block 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 completely block and then he started to increase the rpm now unlock 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 now he started to plot the data point okay at this rpm started to like let's say 30 percent 40 percent even started to do that do it again and again and again then he realized that at certain rpm he is firing light out of the light source it's going to the mirror reflecting and now it's hitting the end part of it at that rpm using some clever mathematics he's like okay that's the light speed and uh, how precise he was well to give you a uh, you know context of that he was five percent of the modern uh, accepted data point five percent like he was precise i mean like that is 1849 he was precise so it was mind-bogglingly awesome to give you a context of like how ingenious this uh, idea is idea the methodology is you can replicate this tool set basically almost everything basically you just need a dremel a tachometer basically something that measures rpm a camera and a laser a individual did that amazing experiment down below and he got almost 99 percent accuracy and simply because i'm pretty sure that his could have gotten even more precise resolution but i think the clocks at that time and other equipments were not that good so other things were limiting because his experiment was quite sound and people have successfully replicated this sort of system at much shorter distance so if you make it much longer and if you have much higher quality tool you'll be like this is light speed in the air deal with it so amazing gentleman i provided that video down below please do check it out because you can watch 10,000 animation it does not make any sense as you watch one person trying to replicate that system it's like uh, i get it now so i would urge you to watch that video down below now, what we can expect in the future? Well, there is an issue here. Now, many times in science, you have to understand this. Science does not mean we know everything or uh, that our old systems were wrong. Old scientific systems are basically low resolution and modern ones are high resolution. What does that mean? That simply means, uh, let's say you take Newtonian physics. It does work. Of course, it was proven, but here's the deal. Uh, compare that to general relativity. General relativity is a much higher megapixel equipment. For example, if you take uh, one to calculate the orbit, you can calculate using Newtonian physics quite reliably. But if you try to stretch that puppy out for, let's say, 700 years or 10,000 years, you will find that orbit starts to, yeah, it starts to become sloppy. Now put general relativity in that mathematics. Now you are like, I can precise that's the whole point like basically we make it more and more precise more and more like oh that's why it happens so einstein when he was creating the general relativity he figured out light speed now here's the way using light speed he did all the mathematics there was a problem he was assuming light speed is same both ways and he created it what we call einstein synchronization convention meaning if there is an assumption inbuilt assumption that light is traveling at the same speed one way and the another way and issue with that is like once you start to tamper with that mathematics all the mathematics still work meaning there could be multiple options like the worst case scenario is uh, c divided by 2 and infinite return power basically photons take a certain amount of time to travel that is there that's absolutely fixed it takes time and return time it's almost like quantum entangling and tweak done and everything that we rely on our scientific measurement will still work and that's creepy that means there is a sloppy factor that we do not know how to deal with at this point in time nobody knows how to do a light speed uh, measurement on one way basically light went from here there and they need to know, know that but right now all the tools is like we, i launched the light it came back or like you have a like optical spool uh, of like you know car, uh, optical fibers it's like okay light went now it returned went return went return you don't want that so nobody has figured out any way of doing that and if you have like you know itch that i can do that i would urge you to please look into a lot of white paper more than enough researchers have tried to do this and more than enough researchers have countered it and successfully countered it's like yeah you are doing this you are you are still measuring two-way path it's surprisingly difficult to do that 
So at this point in time, there is a sloppiness inbuilt into every single mathematics. Now, does our mathematics work? Yes, absolutely. Duh, Hiroshima Nagasaki will have a word with you if you say it's not working. It's a real thing. It does work. But problem is at a deeper level, at a deeper fundamental level, we are at a same point where like, you know, Newton was like, he got the mathematics right. Everything was working, but like, you know, it's good, but we can do better. Same thing is happening here. Einstein reached to this point, but there is a limitation here. Now. Could we, uh, let's say we tomorrow in the future, we figured out a way where it's like, no, light speed is same both ways. Uh, would that change anything? No. Uh, let's say we find like light speed may be different in both ways. Uh, like, you know, one is like X, another is X divided by two or whatever have you. Would that make any difference to the world? No. But to the scientific community? Yes, because it could change uh, deeper levels of it. Basically, we can go from two megapixel to 20 to 200 megapixel kind of photograph. So that is one of those things. At this point in time, that's sloppiness is uh, uncomfortable for many people. For many people, it's like, yeah, just, just ignore it because the world does work. Like people have tried multiple mathematics and this is the extreme variant of that. It's like how far I can push the mathematics and when everything will still work and that's that C divided by two, basically you make a light speed half speed and assume that it returns, that written photon is almost quantum entangled. It's like done and it will still work. That's the furthest you can stretch that puppy out. So there is a slop in the data point, but it still works, it's still something good and more than enough people are still, you know, crunching it out. And if you are the one of those individuals who can crack this puppy, you're going to have a Nobel Prize uh, coming towards you. Amazon 24 hour delivery. So this was my presentation on basically speed of light. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please hit the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice or thrice. And I would urge you to leave a comment because I do try my best to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.